Monday, June 29th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, I want to talk about societal breakdown, the breakdown of law and order, social unrest, and of course, the economy, uh, the money, the markets. I think it's all getting very uh, concerning, in my opinion. Of course, it's still all being done by design, but it, it's been brewing for many, many decades. The powers that be, uh, and some of you might think, oh, how can they organize and or orchestrate all this? Well, when you control all the big institutions, and what do I mean by that? Well, there's the that old saying, uh, give me control of a country's money supply, and I care not who makes the laws. Uh, good old uh, Amschel Rothschild back in the uh, 19th century. So what the uh, powers that be, uh, the globalists, the bankers, uh, Anglo-American uh, establishment especially, has been able to do over the decades is basically pull the strings in order to come to where we are. And I think 1971, of course, was very important uh, when they uh, pulled the rug from underneath uh, a sound monetary system uh, pretty much linked uh, to gold. It wasn't a perfect gold standard, but it was like a gold exchange system where the dollar was supposedly backed by gold and the rest of the currencies were indirectly backed by gold. Ever since then, we've seen a growth of debt, national, personal, corporate debt. We've seen uh, a growth in inequality. That's the key key there as well. And we've seen a uh, financialization of the economy. Uh, we've seen um, the very wealthy become even wealthier. And the central banks playing a huge part in things. So my conclusion is that we're getting closer and closer to the end of this system. And uh, of course, the people who run the system... They're the ones in charge, and uh, the only way to bring it down, of course, is for people, the general public, to lose faith and confidence, not only in the currency, but in government, in the rule of law. And uh, what I've seen the last few weeks with uh, all that's going on, the riots, uh, the police, uh, ministers, uh, members of government, uh, basically not uh, caring uh, about what's going on is very worrying. Uh, and, and I saw this story on Zero Hedge, and I saw it as well on uh, Twitter. And so the story is gun-toting St. Louis lawyers defend mention from BLM protesters in viral video. So uh, those of you who thought you could be safe behind a gated community, a private uh, gated community. Think again. This is uh, what happened here. These protesters invaded a, a private gated community and uh, this couple had to defend themselves. I think the husband was carrying an AR-15. It's pretty amazing. Uh, this is happening in the United States. Uh, and uh, is it happening here in the UK? Uh, not yet. But uh, I think we should be worried. Am I trying to be alarmist? No. Uh, so what's the lesson from this? Well, you need to be low-key. <laughs> uh, as I've said in the past, if you look at uh, where these people lived, uh, these lawyers, it looks like a palace. So uh, I uh, think uh, even the very wealthy have to be worried now uh, after seeing this that uh, there was no one there to stop these people invading private property, right? Because that's what, what it is. And I was thinking about this. Uh, this is a fall of empire. Uh, not only America, but the Western world. And I'll come to the Western world in a second. And lo and behold, at the end of this uh, article, um, Zero Hedge published uh, this uh, tweet here that someone made. Uh, about the, the guy that was defending his uh, mansion in St. Louis. And he put uh, the painting of the fall of empire. 
This is a famous painting here. I think it's uh, about the uh, cycles of society, how they start from agrarian, they then into the city, they become a power, and then it falls. Everything's burning. So uh, this is a really good uh, symbolic uh, picture here. Someone's put that guy there. And I was thinking about that picture, uh, which is quite interesting. But the other thing I would say, this is not only happening in uh, the United States, all the societal breakdown, because, of course, the bankers are in charge in the major Western countries, of course, and it's been done everywhere else. Uh, I read an interesting article yesterday uh, in uh, Yovanovich.com, uh, Pierre Yovanovich. He's been on the Kaiser Report. He's a French journalist. And he interviewed, uh, I'm not sure how famous this general is. He's a retired general uh, from the French army, and he's written a book. And they're uh, talking about this book in the interview. It's, the book is called uh, Rebâtir la France après le Covid-19 sur le roc. So what does that mean? Uh, rebuilding France after Covid on a foundation of stone. Uh, so the general's name is Didier Toza, and I'll put a link to uh, Pierre Yovanovitch's uh, blog uh, below in the description, and you can you and you have you have to scroll down to look at the uh, interview. I've read it, and basically, this general is concerned that not only in the U.S. he sees the U.S. having a lot of problems even maybe civil war, social unrest, and the problems he sees uh, are not just in the U.S., as I said, but also in France. He sees the same thing. He also sees a problem with all the currencies. So here's a general who knows his uh, stuff. Of course, he was trained to look at the uh, worst-case scenario. That's what he says in the interview. He said we could have famine even in France, uh, because of a collapse of the euro or a collapse of the dollar, it could trigger those things. He's already saying that people are queuing up uh, at food banks in France. It's not just in the UK and in the US. It's in all these major countries. And, and he was saying the interesting thing about the food banks. It's not people who are homeless. These are people who well, who normally don't have problems getting food. So I think uh, we need to uh, batten down the hatches. I think we need to sit through this crisis. It's not uh, anywhere near being over. I think uh, the powers that be, the people who run the World Economic Forum, the people who, who said they, they're going to use this crisis to, to bring a reset, they want uh, this to uh, play out. So they can bring uh, a solution and uh, they can only bring a solution uh, and people will accept it only when things get really bad. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have bad news for you. So what do I mean by batting down the hatches? Well, I think it's not the right time right now to plan things, let's say to move to another place, to the countryside. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about that. Get out of the cities. I think it's too late. I think you just need to be careful out there uh, and uh, hold on to what's uh, valuable uh, to you. Uh, I don't have to tell you uh, what that is, of course, in terms of uh, savings. So, um, yeah, it, it's not looking good. Uh, the only hope is that this uh, crisis uh, just goes away. But it doesn't look like it will to me. And talking about um, prices and food and famine. And I think that could be a, a, a next uh, problem for people. And there's been a lot of people talking about that. There's an article today in the uh, FT. And it says, prices are rising faster than official figures suggest. So the same people who are calculating uh, the uh, death numbers, the case numbers for this health crisis, 
apparently are not really calculating the the CPI, which is the consequence of inflation, right? Uh, they call this inflation, but we know that inflation is the creation of money and credit out of thin air that leads to higher prices. But be as it may, let's have a quick look and see that they're underestimating how fast prices are rising. And uh, this is from uh, mainstream professors and economists. So I would say it's even worse. Uh, you need to really go to shadowstats.com to see how really bad it is in terms of uh, prices rising or the consequence of inflation. So it says ONS put too much weight on goods and services unavailable because of COVID-19. So they've kept the basket uh, for the CPI and the RPI the same as usual, even though things are not the same. And basically this article is saying that's why uh, the CPI that the Bank of England uh, is supposed to uh, target came out at 05 They think it should be more like uh, 1% or even more, a little more. So I won't go through the article, uh, but uh, that's what the article is saying. So that's the next big problem as well, um, because... If people lose faith and confidence in law and order, and law and order is administered by the state, by government, and who administers uh, the currency, national currency? Well, it's the same uh, institution, the state. Central bank is part of that. And when people lose faith and confidence in the state to administer a society, they will lose faith and confidence in the currency. And that's when you get uh, the demand for the currency collapse. And when demand for the currency collapses, you get uh, the demand for tangibles going through the roof. And those are the seeds of hyperinflation. So be careful, I would say. And uh, especially if you listen to people like uh, Mr. Dent, who might be right about a collapse of the economy, but uh, he could be wrong about the fact that currencies will survive, fiat currencies will survive. So we could have an implosion collapse of all the economies, which I think we're having anyway, and a collapse of the fiat currency. And that's why you need to be intangibles. Let's look at where the markets are this morning. Does it really matter? Well, let's have a look. They're still out there. They're still... People trading, uh, it's 8.32 a.m. London. We've got spot gold at 17.69.50. is down about a dollar and a half from the close on Friday. Range has been 17.67 to 17.76. Uh, silver's up four cents, 17.82. Uh, high has been 17.98 and the low 17.73. Yeah, uh, again, stop worrying about the fiat price of precious metals um, because if people lose faith and confidence in the fiat currency the only uh, kind of money that will survive are gold and silver maybe cryptocurrencies I would say cryptocurrencies could even be priced in gold or silver uh, so yeah I, I think it's uh, the time to stop worrying about the price Stop worrying about trading gold and silver, uh, even though you can trade still gold and silver if you want, and uh, make profits in the fiat currency that people, in my opinion, are going to lose confidence in. But that's up to you. Uh, the Dow is up 136 points or half a percent at 25,157. So, how can the stock market keep? Uh, going up when this is happening well um, maybe some people think that uh, having claim to real businesses uh, when everything around them is collapsing could be a good thing who knows uh, the S&P is up 13 points at 3026 
The NASDAQ 100 future is up 22 points or uh, 0.2 of a percent at 98.78. So now NASDAQ underperforming. Uh, the dollar is a little weaker here. Uh, we've got the pound up 0.2 of a percent at 123.59. We've got the euro up a quarter of a percent at 112.50. And uh, the dollar is unchanged versus the yen at 107.18. WTI crude is down 1.6% at 37.89. To finish off, the 10-year yield is up 1.3 basis points at 0.65. So still quite subdued, uh, the 10-year yield. Uh, that, of course, is moving um, with the stock market right now. As the stock market goes down, we're seeing uh, yields go down and people buy government bonds but uh, pretty quiet right now, the bond market. So there you go. Uh, I don't want to be alarmist, but uh, my hope is that this all <laughs> goes away, but it doesn't feel like it. Uh, even here in the UK, we're having problems, uh, riots, uh, we're having violent protests, we're having uh, the police act similarly uh, to, uh, in the U.S., a lot of police are not really cracking down on these protests. Even in France, the general I was talking about earlier, who did an interview with Pierre Jovanovic, he was saying that uh, when the Minister of in Interior, uh, Mr. Castanet, criticizes the police publicly, he says uh, because of these protests and He's not uh, like sacked. He thinks it's a really bad thing um, uh, that the police is not being backed up by the Minister of Interior, uh, is not uh, being given support. And he thinks that's planting the seeds for more societal disorder. So we really need to uh, keep an eye on things. I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, things are going to get worse. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Parlay, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.